Here we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron podcast. You are looking beautiful today. I want to let you know. And you're watching the final of the Sigma Flight Club qualifier. If you've never watched us here on Twitch before or you're watching on YouTube later on, I want to remind you we're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Now, this is an event. This is a special thing. Check out GoldSquadronPodcast.com for our events. Uh, we have upcoming next weekend the Omega Qualifier. And in this final for the Sigma Qualifier, we got Nicholas Durand versus Sebastian Dem Demers. Figure out who is going to get that plaque that claims that they won this qualifier on their way to the Ace Championship. I'm joined by my co-host, William Haywood. A pop. Our Time for the final. That's right. Our Marshall D. Yoon. Uh, hi. Uh, he I'm didn't expect stream. me to call him out. Yeah. And our producer, uh, producer, I don't words today, uh, Jonah Piscani. Hi, everybody. All right. Well, I'm about to open up those that choose your champion poll will break down this squad because it looks like they about to get into it. Oh, yeah, they are not messing around. All right, we got Nicholas Durand on our left. That's your bet one all. Choose your champion um, with one, two, three, four, five Inquisitors with Foresight. Uh, the Inquisitors are tying V1s with a single Force Charge. And they're rocking Foresight, which says it's a two-dice bullseye-only attack. Range one to three, preventing range bonuses. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, you may spend your Force to perform this attack as a bonus attack um, when you attack you can change one eyeball result to a hit result and your dice cannot be modified otherwise uh, so this is a uh, we call it a snapshot like effect uh, where you can get those bonus attacks in the activation phase uh, uh, they also have these great linked actions and um, oh, oh man we can't talk enough about the v ones uh, so let's go over to uh, Sebastian Demers, your bet to all champion. Uh, Rocky and Scum and Billy has two cartel spacers with tractor beams, two cartel spacers with tracer missiles, a uh, sunny bounder with an advanced proton torpedo. That's the range one five dice attack. And also Nam Lam and the Jump Master with Proton Torpedoes, Zam Wessel, and False Transponder Codes. Uh, Nam Lam, when he defends or becomes the defender specifically, must rotate his turret to that uh, to include the defender. Uh, the Proton Torpedo is given a four dice attack out the front arc. And Zam Wessel is going to be what we're going to talk about all game mm -hmm. <laughs> the Secret Condition cards. Uh, has two charges, starts the game with them lost, um, but has the two of them. Dion, you're, you're you're on top of this more than I am. It's you better mean business. Mm -hmm. You better mean business one? is, and uh, you should thank me. You, you better mean business me. is. Uh, you're not going to see that one right away. You need. You should thank me first in order to. Traditionally, you, you set up, you should thank me first in order to take on shots and then recover charges, of course, versus a five ships, uh, five, I'm going to say swarm, sorry, okay, <laughs> I guess a five so. ship list, um, you might consider if you think that their target priority is not taking Nom Lom first, you could potentially put down, you better, you better mean business and be able to recover those charges when you're not getting shot, but you're sitting in the arc of an enemy. It's a little bit of a mind game most of the time to people are gonna put down the you should thank me in order to recharge first because you're you're basically thinking hey if i'm not getting shot i'm not getting shot even if i'm not getting those charges back i'm not taking damage so we'll end up seeing what they end up uh end up taking here i want to go ahead and also point out that right now our betting is open for choose your champion we got five minutes left in that currently bets 58 percent towards Nicholas, 41% towards Sebastian. And one thing we got to talk about Sebastian, Sebastian official field promotion from veteran up to ace. He scored in the four and two bracket and has made it all the way to the final table and per flight club championship rules has been given that field promotion to ace. There you go, buddy. 
Wow, congratulations. Uh, for sure. Uh, this um, is a big moment um, for our ranking system, um, which you, if you only get uh, zero to one wins, you are a uh, rookie. Zero to two. Or, excuse me. Zero to, zero to two. two. Yep, exactly. Uh, three to three to four wins is going to put you into the veteran championship. And five or six wins in Swiss is going to put you into that ace, unless you did what uh, what Sebastian has done and got to the final table. All right. What? One of the things about Nicholas List with those four sites, he is great at setting up those bullseyes. Both games where we saw him on the stream, he does a great job of setting those bullseyes in different areas uh, at different angles. Now, here's the question. The value of foresight is really high when playing against a low ship count list. Do we think that foresight, we might see, uh, is it a little bit briskier to use it against a... A uh, six ship list when uh, when you're gonna have a lot of shots coming back at you, or is it you know especially worth it because of the potential for taking ships off the board early? I, I don't exactly what you're saying here. Um, util utilizing that uh, foresight could cost you some health yourself, but mm -hmm. I think the with this type of swarm you need to go full aggression, and we see it here. Foresight modifies it with its ability for hit crit. Uh, should not have the range bonus. It yep, is... there, we'll get that re-roll here. Feels bad when you roll the two natties and going to be taking one. First M3A, taking a shield. Now, one of the things that three agility does do for you is you have these potential for big swings of rolling two evades and having that foresight shot and being able to get up to, in a turn, potentially 10 10 shots, right? Um, it does give you just more bites at the apple trying to push through that three agility. And of course, it does happen before the action takes place. So you can have this this two dice attack happening without having to worry about a focus token off on there on a three attack, uh, excuse me, three defense dice ship. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian doing a, a good job here. He's staying back for the initial engagement. Uh, was only able to or only got one four shot four sight shot on him and it looks like the rest of these m3a is going to be safe uh nom Lom, i th i think sebastian recognized that nom Lom is not going to be the target of attacks like in the other matches mm -hmm. and it's gone ahead and put that uh arc on the inside and it's taken a target lock trying to arm those proton torpedoes mm-hmm because one of the things, if he did put down the, you should, uh, sorry, the uh, better mean business in order to get the, um, uh, to get the the charges while not being attacked at the end of the activation, excuse me, at the end of engagement, uh, he doesn't get a lock from that. So this just makes it so that he can arm that proton torpedo, and now you got some decisions to make if you're uh, if you're Nicholas whether or not you're going to shoot there. Now, really quickly here, uh, D. Who's your champion? Who do you think has the advantage here? Ooh, ah, man, those, uh, the green variance on those M3As makes it so difficult to call. But um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wager on the foresight, in, the Inquisitors. All right, what about you, Jonah? I got to go with the foresight. We've seen this list uh, perform really, really well with all the foresight stuff and uh, I think it's just unstoppable. And uh, real quick, I just want to give give you guys a fun fact. Both of our players here are fluent in French, and uh, that's what they're uh, speaking to each other right now in French, uh, playing the last game. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's why I, the table mic is off. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand French, and that's okay. Let them let them be comfortable. Let them... Dio, no. <laughs> that's right. I I know like four French words, maybe five. All right, Will, did you tell us who you who you're choosing as your champion? No, I I bet on Sebastian Demers. I think that uh, the advantages he was taking against the X wings um, when he was moving first, denying the actions from uh, the ships moving after him. Uh, I think we'll give him the edge in uh, the coming rounds. 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and see what we end up getting here. Inquisitor moving on up. I mean, this is this a joust? Is it a joust? Kind of. It's not an honorable one, but it's a joust. <laughs> Who broke Who the got... code? Nicholas, you broke it. It's no <laughs> It's your <laughs> fault that's why that's why it's not honorable. It's just a joust. What would be a dishonorable joust? Let's talk about that. That that's an interesting question for another day. Figure that out, chat. We have an honorable joust, a joust, and a dishonorable joust. Is that if you block people in the <laughs> in the joust? Is that dishonorable? Oh, in in the very very early days of first edition, uh, blocking oh was goodness. considered uncouth. I uh, it sure was. How dare you move in front of me? Oh. How are we supposed to shoot each other if we're hugging? It's like a <laughs> boxing clinch. Like, no, come on, let's let's throw some punches. All right, and it begins. The initiative advantage for these Thai V1s at initiative three could end up shining at some points. Yep, has plenty of sh <laughs> three different ships for, uh, for a foresight if he wants it. Doesn't look like anybody's a range one um, for this guy, so might as well. You know, these are both uh, two incredible players. Uh, when I chose my champion, I, I forgot to consider that uh, Nicholas had also played six rounds of the, the Swedish championship. Oh! Six, six rounds of Swiss here, and then, uh, like, like uh, this is round five today. He's uh, He was a little loopy at the end of uh, the last match. <laughs> These guys are crazy. Uh, yeah, but it, he's, he's in a rhythm. Uh, each game we've seen him play the same way. Two up front, and then the other three coming in from the middle. Overlapping those bullseyes. Now, able to get the two uh, evades there. Next shot. Yeah, looks like yellow is a target. The, the green variants I was discussing. He gets uh, a few squiggles up front, uh, you know, in the early portion of the match and, and doesn't get initiative killed. Uh, Sebastian, uh, I mean, that's, that's how Sebastian can roll. Yeah, like, uh, that's what I'm saying. That's what we saw in this X-Wings matchup. All right, two hits here. I assume onto yellow. Oh, natties. natties. Next shot. Third shot into that yellow M3A has not even had to get rid of his focus. Only one hit here from the foresight. All right. Finally take some damage here. Scratching the paint. Taking a shield. I guess technically the shield is in the paint. That's before the paint. Now we can scratch the paint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just think that these Inquisitors are going to be shooting a bunch of two dice attacks this round. Or the this NCAAs is, are going to be shooting three dice attacks. This is a three dice at range one. Has some potential. Ooh. Only using the force for one. Took an evade on that... Uh, on that ship, didn't a focus token would have been uh, would have been great, but gets out of it. Yellow M3H refusing, just saying, nah, man, I don't, I, I didn't come here to play. Are you kidding? Uh, this one does have a range one on Nom Nom and Gre uh, Brown. Will trying to bring Grievous back from the dead there for a moment. <laughs> I think so. And looks like the cl the call is the range one. Is he going to spend the focus? He did foresight already this round. Mm, is he I choosing you violence? Just, you're just going to give up that entire Inquisitor if you do. It's a tough decision. It's the only. It's the last shot, I believe, of the, of the Inquisitors. Oh, wait a second. Wait, hold on. We missed something. the what? The false transponder code should have gone off this turn, shouldn't it? Because of the lock. Uh. That not yeah, that's took. correct. Yeah, yeah. Just someone ding. We'll just false 
trans. Yeah, that's not a May. That, that's that not a May ability. Awesome. Yep. It didn't mean anything up until that exact point in time. <laughs> we got to indeed. I will tell you <laughs> if, if if did did, Nic <laughs> did Nicholas play Nicholas played in the. Uh, in Swedish, do we know if Sebastian did too? <laughs> these guys, these guys could be mentally just jelly right now. I don't think Sebastian did, but even still, so. two two there there two days of X Wing, tons of uh, tons of games, lots of decision making. Easy to miss some stuff like that. So we're gonna try to take care of these players. It's it's that balance, right? Try let them play, but don't be too intrusive. But make sure they're following the rules. <laughs> yeah, the game game stays important, exact especially for something like that that we could catch right now. Yep. Now, if we would have caught that like after all the M3A shot, then that's a different story. Uh, Jonah, really quickly, make sure uh, take the shield off of the brown M3A that happened in the opening. They lost it to a foresight. That was a tracer missile. Oh, set up the locks. That's what I'm saying. That these M3As have three dice attacks between the uh, tractor beams and the the tracer missiles. And was able to get through that jammed Inquisitor. Are, are they? Is is the chat preparing the Fs in the chat? Is is this Inquisitor going to go down? We'll see. Um, still needs to hit with the tractor. I mean, as D was saying, like three dice, three dice variants is a bit hard to exactly predict, but all of these shots are focused target lock and probably three mm -hmm. dice. So should be pretty easy to hit. Starts with one hit already. Looks like so th this is the tractor beam then. Yep. This is yellow for the tractor and that's going to be three after spending it. One blank does it, and there's a tractor. He's probably going to get pulled forward into range one. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no, there, you don't lose anything there. If he, he, if he takes the 90 degree rotation, he's double stressed. He's going to yeah. take it. That's going to no, be he, double. Yes, he, he, he hit the wrong button because ah. the tractor, the tractor button's so goofy. It is. All right, we're going to go ahead and move the camera here, uh, bring you guys a little bit better view. There we go. The dice will be on that lower half of the screen. Uh, let me adjust this one more time. Dirt, 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 there you go. Pulls them on in. There we go. And yeah, that's going to be a lot. That's going to be Sunny Bounder probably up next. Advanced Proton Torpedo. Get that Inquisitor out of here. Next shot, range one. All right. He's going to try to soften him up here with the primary. Should have a lock. And, and a focus. That's going to be three. Yeah, might be trying to save the advanced proton torpedo here. I mean, if he if he's feeling that he can uh, he can just kill this uh, Inquisitor without it and save that for another one, that five dice punch could end up mattering way more Is that later on. Too many green dice with the the tractor beam. Oh that yes, was, that was too many. Is that a reroll? Yeah. Yeah, it's a reroll. Um. Uh. It was three hits. Yeah, D, D, go just let him know. Oh, wait. Oh, and now he's got two evades. <laughs> I, always, I always feel bad when... Uh... <laughs> yep, I mean, that's, that is the rules. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly stated. That is the rules. <laughs> that's the rules. All right. All right, this looks like Nam Lam then. Shooting the range one turret. Has a lock out there. Not going to spend it. 
No, he, he did spend it. Oh, he for... did it. Sorry, I didn't see the initial roll. Now he's down to one hole. And let's see if this final tracer, uh, uh, fi final spacer, can take out this Inquisitor. And that's going to be two. Needs natties. Go! Got him. Uh, I think just Sonny's left to shoot. There's only one more. It is a range one shot. Mm, do you guarantee it with the advanced proton? Oh, that's greedy, fam. Just take, just get the fully. You just need, you get three. Get three get here. Three? Get the. You got, you got a fully modded shot. There's no reason to get greedy. There it is. There, there it is. is. You're good. Guaranteed. Gone. You didn't get a ship and a half like he like uh, Sabat uh, like Nicholas probably was expecting to lose, um, but. Being able to take that ship out for Sebastian, I think, puts him in a good spot. Zero to forty, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what how Nicholas can respond in his next coming turns. Uh, yeah, uh, he's gonna need to get those four. I see. I think this is this is the problem that I was gonna see is that like, yeah, you're gonna get your four sights off. Cool. You're gonna shoot two attacks at three agility, right? Mm hmm. What, what, hold on, I'm distracted by what's going on over here. No, oh, they're just Dan. They must have been talking about something else. Yeah. Anyways, uh, they're spawning arcs and freaking me out. Like more people were shooting for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is what I was saying before: is that uh, so? Um, Sebastian's done a really good job in the past of baiting in these close engagements and then blocking the higher initiative ships. So if these Inquisitors decide to take their foresights when the spacers come in to block, they're sure they'll shoot twice, but they won't have any modifiers for defense. I think they're just going to get chewed up by these yep. spacers who do. Tracers and spacers, man. Those target locks... Absolutely brutal. Super strong. Now, I want to remind, again, everybody, we have that Omega qualifier happening next weekend. It is happening during the London time zone. And, yes, you can play. It doesn't matter where you live on the planet. Anybody can take a part in these qualifiers. None of our events, uh, at least thus far, are... Um, you know, landlocked or anything like that. We, we're not anybody can play in any time zone. It's fine if you can play, you can make it. I know, especially there's a lot of American players that like to play uh, during the uh, European time zones and vice versa, because a lot of times they can play those games in the evenings when maybe their families are asleep, uh, if they're families, or if they're not. You know, that's a time when they're uh, when they're not working for instance if you work on the weekends there are still tickets available i think as of right now let me go go take a peek i haven't been uh as aggressively obviously we had sigma today so i haven't been uh, going through all the acceptances and all that for omega right now but it looks like we are at what will end up being as of right now about 80 players right now i expect it to probably end up going to about a hundred and thirty 20, 130 would be my guess. Uh, maybe more. Usually there's a, there's a slew of signups uh, on the Friday before or the, and the Thursday before as people hit payday. <laughs> it usually happens. But yeah, we got one more qualifier left and then we head into those championship events. And I want to remind everybody who's participated in your registration, the championship event is included in that. So you don't there's no you don't need to pay anything extra. We're going to be sending out an email uh, with links to the championship signups after we complete all of the qualifiers and we uh, we double check to make sure where everybody is ranked. And and then it's party time, guys three championship events everybody gets the opportunity to get championship level swag and if you haven't checked it out head to goldsquadronpodcast.com templates template trays all kinds of pretty stuff super excited to see what happens i know i'm most excited to see those uh i mean 
I'm excited for all the championships, but I am I have like a like a joy in my heart for the fact that we're doing the recruit championship for our newer and and less experienced players that uh, have an opportunity to to win a championship belt or a, a set of templates at a championship level event that where they normally as a newer player wouldn't get an opportunity to get those. Um, but this was the whole point with it, right? Is is trying to get people play at their level. Now you got you got to get through the qualifier first. You got you got to you got to go through that fire. Uh, but once you're there, you're there. Uh, will the championship events have top eight faction prizes? No, there are no ch faction prizes for the championship events. It's just for the uh, the qualifiers. Though the uh, the faction pins aren't going away that will be uh, a thing for a couple of other gold squadron events here in the future and here we go it is time one bank nom lom going to have some range one shots and it looks like these spacers are getting in the face trying to get some blocks but are going to have to suffer some of those foresights oh yeah here are the foresights <laughs> yeah you got two of them coming in so yellow's diving in here, trying to draw some of those fire. Shoot me. Shoot me. <laughs> and two hits on the first tracer. Remember, no modifiers for the cartel spacer. Just rolling and got the natties. Natties. No big deal. Second foresight coming in. One crit. The only modifier you can do on those uh, attacks are the focus to hit that is included on the card, but not pushing any damage through on that one. Man, yellow, the the the, the legend of number yellow question mark refusing well, to take what, damage. The the foresight's just aren't as good against three agility ships, even mm -hmm. if they don't have mods, it's still just straight better. Yep. But I had I think I have seen why. Uh, Nicholas uh, evades a lot because if he's already shooting foresight, you don't need any other offensive mods. Mm -hmm. So kind of it just mods itself. Yep. And Here's your, some more foresights. Your modifier ends up being for defense. Exactly. Here we go. One hit. Shrugs it off. Shrugs it off. And, and you're right, Will. Versus versus something like what we saw against Daniel, right? Against Daniel Leon in the top four. Force, um, or sorry, not not in the, in the. It was not in the top four. It was earlier. We saw mm -hmm. Sebastian, uh, sorry, Nicholas playing against a a list that had one and two agility ships, and you're able mm -hmm. to really push through that damage pretty quickly with foresight. Yeah, he was chewing through those arcs we saw earlier, just because they couldn't block anything on those foresights. But ships that have three agility. Eh, they can get one or two evades. And yeah, we just have them just group, just compact in here. Yellow gets out of there without a bump. Should still have a shot on Nom Lom. Takes a focus. Oh, I guess it just used its force, though, didn't it? Yeah. So, and doesn't have, and has nobody in its bullseye. So I like that thinking, though, of, like, check after you move, like, am I going to have a four-set attack? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we take different modifiers. Blue All right, Inquisitors. In too. Now, check this out. We have not seen Nicholas take focuses. He has been primarily taking evades for the defensive potential. He's like, you know what? I'm range one. I'm going to have this focus for this range one attack. I don't know. Makes sense to me. Uh, Dom Lom's not hurt though, so you're not like killing that ship. And yeah, these these other ones aren't going anywhere. Like Green's in a bad spot right now, without any mods spent it on foresight. Has a lot of ships looking at him. <laughs> All righty. One dice didn't uh, didn't get rolled, and just one crit there. Range one from that Inquisitor that got that hopped over, 
Got the squiggle. Nom nom looking strong. Yep. What's our Zam card? Oh, it's you should thank me. You should thank it's me. It's a lock so and a charge. Mm -hmm. And that fully charges up Zam, so expect that you better, you better mean business card to be slapped down there. Starting after this turn. Here's another range one shot. Ooh, rough dice. Yeah, one hit. No focus conversions available. Probably going to get a shield here. Nom Lom has a focus. Uh, probably wants that fully modified shot. Yep, just going to take it. Needs to help out on offense. Uh, Sebastian's got some momentum, I think, with the first kill. And he's just going to try to build on it here. Because I don't think these Inquisitors can take out one of these M3As. The hurt ones are brown and yellow. So, I guess to go into brown. Now, people asking about the Nom Lom trigger. Uh, the blue Inquisitor is in the side arc. So, no, no change there. No change required. Had the option yep. to switch to target lock, ends up keeping it. Inquisitors trying to decide on what target they want to take. And not coming up empty there. Yeah, this is a rough, rough round for the Inquisitor's attacks. I believe you have to rotate if... Wait, but he's... Am I misreading? He is in the side arc, though. He is in the side arc. That's what I'm saying. Am I misreading it? After you perform an attack... Yeah, he's, it, he's, the in, the, he's in the arc. In your, you're right. Ten push-ups for whoever said I was wrong. <laughs> Do them now. Get swole. Let's go. Uh, that was another three dice, one eye. Super Man. rough round. That's terrible. I don't think rolled a natural hit. It ro rolled one natural hit on. Excuse me. I got one crit and one hit naturally on 12 dice. That feels bad. One out of 12. Two, yeah, out, two of 12. out of 12. Two out of 12. All righty. Well, that is that is definitely a rough engagement there for Nicholas. Uh, and now the M3As, it's their turn to go a marching. Here we go. The red M3A firing into the green TIE V1. It's a four dice shot. This is a tractor beam. Looking to bring that Inquisitor down to two agility, making it easier to clear it off the board. And that is going to hit. Is he tractor in green? Yep. Green oh, is he's tractor. Doing of, he's doing one of my favorite things with tractor beams, which is tractor beaming somebody off of the ship who blocked them. Yep. So now everybody can shoot at them. That's so scummy. <laughs> <laughs> Now to rotate the, here as well. Yep, taking the stress. He's got a good good dial to clear stress. Sets him up for some foresights next turn. Here's the range one shot. Now this is Cartel Spacer 2. This is one that has... Uh, he's just going to fire the primary. All right, two hits. And gets the first damage through. Only to agility because of the tractor. Here's a range two shot. Expect all these to be primary, and that's two. This Inquisitor does that's not have any force. No force available. That's another shield. Half points. Mm -hmm. 
So but green was, uh, brown, shields brown down. The, the force, I think. Sunny Bounder coming up here. Got the Ooh, double adds eyeballs, adds an eyeball, and spends a focus. That is Sonny Bounder. <laughs> Sonny Bounder. Three hits. What a ship. And all three of those going through the Green Inquisitor. Down and out. He's still got a couple shots left, doesn't he? Uh, Yeah, that was, yes. just, a, that was just a few of them. Uh, he's still got the green, red cartel spacer, and I believe Nom Lom. Another whiff there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was not the roll. There's the roll. Takes a shield on the blue Ty V1. Nope. Has a focus. Never mind. That was on the yellow. Yep. Now I'll shoot Nom Lom. Focus lock. Same target. Focus is gone, so no modifiers. Here's the lock. Three hits. And there's a squiggle showing up, but he did give up half points there on the yellow and uh, yellow inquisitor. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if there's any more shots. I don't think so. No, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so especially has been... Uh, very procedural, and I always shoots Nom Nom last. Has a yep. very specific order of shooting ships. So, um, as long as they're done and we can, um, we're back into dials. Then, mm -hmm. uh, I got a question for you. So this comes from Wade Snaps mm -hmm. uh, from our chat here. It says I've had this upstream all right well, i've had the stream up while i was doing stuff around the house has every game been a joust is this what hyperspace is um i have a a lot of answers for that question but i i think that primarily sebastian demers list a hundred percent it wants the joust it wants nothing but the joust was um and Nicholas Duran's list in this matchup, uh, he, Nicholas Duran's with the foresight has also been looking for a pseudo joust, right? Lining up across from his ship, from his enemy ships to try to get uh, easier ways to foresight. Um, but I don't think every list in hyperspace is uh, necessarily a straight joust, though I do think swarms and things that are kind of front heavy with attack power are certainly what's doing well in hyperspace. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I want your thoughts I on that? I thought okay. that uh, Nicholas might use those uh, two Inquisitors he set up in the corner to to kite and drag the, the swarm through uh, the obstacle field while sending the other three on a, on a longer flank. Uh, but uh, it, it, it was more of a... At least a two ship. I mean, it was more or less of a an oblique joust, a dishonorable joust. <laughs> dishonorable joust. And I think that comes from the play style of uh, trying to utilize those foresights. If you are utilizing foresights and ships are moving before you, you have to already be looking at them. Yep. Yeah, you got to be set up beforehand. Now, another, another question here that's in the chat. This was from... Well, I lost it from Wookie Barber, and I I feel like this is a this is a bit of a fallacy that I see around there. Um, it says, "Do you think it would be hard? Like, do you think the meta would be the same with the uh, with the repeated ships because people wouldn't buy the models?" Here's the thing: competitively, players will buy and get the models if they really think that having six M3As is going to give them a competitive advantage. If we were in person right now, the players will buy or borrow the uh, the M3As or whatever ship that they would need to repeat that they would need. And many, many competitive level players 
own multiple copies of the ships already. So um, it, it's I I, I see a, like I know that there there is this I, I call it just a little bit of a of a fallacy out there where people think like oh you know it's easy to fly the swarms on tabletop simulator because you don't have to um, you don't have to commit money to getting the multiples of ships but my counter argument is that the top players who are playing them in most cases if they're able to play in person and they're coming to uh in person premiere events would have those ships in person anyway do you agree d uh 100% because uh once you tally up uh Airfare, a hotel, eating out, uh, convention, badge fee, <laughs> tournament entry fee. What, what's a few bits of plastic? Yep. Yeah, that's there. You go. That's that's even that's a whole nother that that brings it to it. If you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars to get to the place, you're gonna make sure you have the list that you want. <laughs> What what price tag are you gonna put on glory? Marcel Manzano, gifting some t- gifting some subs. Whoop whoop. I don't know who that guy is, but I bet he's pretty cool. So James Spellis says TTS makes it very easy to switch lists on a dime week to week compared to in person. You're correct. You're correct in that, but that's. That hasn't been anything different, really, from the competitive scene from before. So, you know, TTS has been around for a while, but competitively, I think, you know, because of COVID, has come into uh, into into bigger popularity uh, in this time in this year, 2020. But competitive players have been practicing lists uh, online if they didn't want to have, uh, you know, pr- practice uh, if they wanted to practice different ships via Vassal for years, and even in person if you're practicing things and you you want to practice a squad that you're not committing to buying yet, people just proxy. People just proxy. You just just. Take take a take a ship out uh, a base. Put any ship you want on there, or no ship at all, and just say it is something if you're practicing it. And then the the final stage is um, most top competition players are part of a crew, or at least have strong ties with the extended fraternity of uh, elite players. And mm-hmm. I mean, we we lend stuff and borrow stuff oh, yeah. all the time. One hundred percent. All right, so we're getting into the scrum here with the Inquisitors. Yeah, we didn't see any force sight attacks there. It just it did not come to pass. I mean, Sebastian does have a commanding lead right now. Looks like the decision is, uh, okay, it looks like we're going to be going into engagement. Here we go, range one at Sunny Bounder. That is the most expensive M3A. Only rolling one. one. That is the average, expected average, and we are evading. The dice not bailing out Nicholas Durand in this one. Uh, so we're going to go for Sunny here. Hit crit. Here we go. Starting to warm up a little bit. Can he push some damage through here? And one of them is going to land. Shield gets ripped off. And we, we have to note that uh, Nicholas hasn't been able to focus fire or anything. It's just uh, scattered the single shields all over the place. Mm-hmm. And that's to, to a huge advantage for Swarm List, right? If you start stretching out that damage, hit hit crit uh, was the offensive role here. All right. Going to put some pain out there. It spends for, for one. And uh, that's going to be... One one shield. 
I did he flip the wrong thing. Uh, double checking. Yeah, Inquisitor 5 is range 1. Inquisitor 5 is... Yeah, yeah two go. shields. Found okay. Found it, found it. I, was, I was like, wait, did I miss something? <laughs> uh, no, no okay. the, the, players, the players caught it. The players yeah, caught they it. got it. They got it. Uh, this is the Sunny Bounder APT coming in. Man, I, I want that six hits. Come on. Not today. <laughs> Too much <laughs> no, you, want to, you want to see that 1%? No. <laughs> there's the crit. Why does there have to be a crit? He could advance Proton Torpedo, change the crit first, then reroll all three. <laughs> He's not going to get greedy there. He's just going to wow. dig. He's just going <laughs> to dig for the damage. I want to see it. Oh, Changes for a crit. Two, two hits, two crits, and kills that Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be, be 140 on I, the board. I would go 0 and 6 in a tournament if during one of those games I could get six hits with Sonny, or six crits with Sonny Bounder. All <laughs> I'm saying. I mean, that's just you changing your uh, true win condition to something else, right? That's true. That's true. That's that's true. I was true. like, oh, Sunny Bounder died. Everybody flies off the board. Like, uh, the I'm done. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> call, call me when the next round starts. What's a tournament to you? The tournament is six opportunities to get six hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, coming uh, up a little bit short there. Now, yeah, one thing I, I, I do want it's been it's been pointed out in the chat, and while Nicholas has been on the low side of a uh, variance here offensively, uh, Sebastian has done a great job of putting his ships in the right place to take advantage of it. He's blocking the lanes for the M3As. He's utilizing his tools, making sure that he's uh, you know tractor beaming things when it's appropriate, and taking those tools and using them to his advantage. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, and and uh, in the game that we saw him before as well, that he once he's got this advantage now, he knows how to keep it as well. He doesn't make any kind of frivolous mistakes, uh, like baiting or letting one M three A just get in surround him. Mm -hmm. And now, now the clock is totally in Sebastian's uh, uh, <laughs> favor because you know every one of those dials that he sets, uh, he's, he's not slow playing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, every turn chews up so much time, um, and uh, it's it's because he has so many bodies still to to do so. It just landslides. Did we miss an attack there? Mm. Oh, I'm just confused. Oh, I took one shield. No, no, it's just says the Inquisitor spawned its arc. I was like, why didn't the Inquisitor take the shot at the very end? But it wasn't it wasn't the Inquisitor who rolled the dice though. It was still Sebastian. So I don't know what that was. Anyways. Um I yeah, Sebastian now has a pretty commanding lead. The these two Inquisitors are gonna have to have outrageous variants just to just to kill a couple of these M3As. Ah, they were uh, the bonus attack. He has charges down. When did he spend his charges on Zam? Did that happen in this round? We just missed that it was a bonus attack. No, um, that's, not, that's not possible because he had. You should thank me out there. I think it's the the second clause of you should thank me at the end of the engagement phase if right. this card is face down. Yeah, I I, so I, I, just, I, I understand that. Did, did I just mentally miss the, the yeah, attack? Yeah, that, that was the last two attacks that I was confused about. I thought the Inquisitor got shot, it. but it wasn't. It was Zam's bonus attack. Got it, got it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, 25 minutes left on the clock. Um, now, you know, this is... <laughs> Uh, this is a definitely a, a tough place for Nicholas to be in. He's got two two Inquisitors left, more like one and a half. And Sebastian has not lost a single point. Not a single point. 
And, you know, there, there could be a little bit here uh, of, of Nicholas. You know, D, I really liked your idea of the attempt of trying to kite the M3A swarm a little bit with those Inquisitors that were placed at the top left corner of the screen. And, you know, in, in an alternate universe, maybe that's what ends up happening. But there also could be like, hey, let's just joust and get this <laughs> over with. Yeah, I thought he had the tools to do it with uh, uh, the roll or boost action with the Inquisitors. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and uh, you know, being able to stay one step ahead of uh, those, uh, those those really deadly locks and, and tor uh, proton torpedo range. Yep. 100%. Yeah, we saw Daniel last round. Uh, he didn't go for the straight joust. He was kind of just creeping along this board edge, or the neutral edge, excuse me, and forced these M3As to go through the asteroid field and was able to focus down Nom Lam. But he ended up losing it in the scrum anyways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Also, chat talking about the fact that Zam is a great buy. You know, just talking about some of the some of the things that might change in the future here. Uh, AMG will have their opportunity to touch the points for the first time uh, coming up in uh, that would be in the summer, right? If they're planning on just doing it twice a year, that'd be in uh, in June. So we're still you know four four ish months away. It's something that will end up likely affecting the um, the Galactic Championship Series. At some point, for sure, you know, in Coruscant, we'll see what ends up happening. Or, sorry, not it's actually not called Coruscant. Spoilers. Um, in the in the final uh, the championship, but and we'll end up seeing what gets what gets changed here. There's a lot of cheap things here, and the question is, from from what we see here on the table, that's hyperspace legal. What do we think? Um, what do we think could be different? in points from what we see in hyperspace and how it performs in extended in, in extended we're for sure seeing a bunch of zam right so we, there might be <laughs> crew up 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 right like there right. there is a there's a lot of data there that tells us that zam should be going up 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 um so you know what else here is there anything else here on the board that needs to go up that you think needs to go up in points what do you guys think i mean we did already see the tractor beams go up uh, I feel bad to increase the M3As up to 26 uh, because they're not. A 26-point M3A versus a 25-point foe is not a comparison. The foe is better. So per Perhaps, yeah, I, I know Nicholas is uh, taking a beating here, but perhaps the Inquisitor might t need to tick up a point. <laughs> to prevent this particular squad uh because i don't want to punish foresight because it is neat on some uh other uh force users mm -hmm. it would make a case for an increase in false transponder codes to two it is two right now I thought it was one. three no no, we're just gonna have to put all the elicits at three. Apparently, we can't have two point elicits anymore. <laughs> Magic number. How how do you guys feel about threat tracers? Because uh, when they announced that they were um, reissuing them for second edition, I, I got I got really anxious. And we are seeing them everywhere. They, they're and they're I, essentially an auto. You got a missile slot? Take a tracer. They're an auto. Yeah, you got two man. dice. If you got two dice in a missile slot, bring a tracer. I I don't know. They could probably go up to three. But I think that it would break a lot of squads, though. That would really, really would want them. That's probably okay. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. And nothing on that. Spends for one. Spend the force on the Brown Inquisitor, and is there a focus out there? And doesn't look like it. Does one damage. Next four shot, four sight attack. One hit. 
Got the squiggle. I know some players have been asking, or some people in the chat have been asking, why foresight? Why use that as your weapon when it's time to shoot during the engagement phase? And it, it takes away the range bonus, which is absolutely massive. And, of course, it gives you that soft mod. You know, changing the focus to a hit is just part of the card. And when you don't have a focus or a force that you want to save for defense or something like that, uh, that can be really huge. Green M3A playing a little bit of patty cake. No damage there. Here comes Sunny Bounder. And does not have a lock set up, so nothing there. Red M3A. Only one. Currently stressed. They don't want to hurt each other this turn. Too much violence nah. to, to start the game. Slowing it down here. <laughs> uh. So, Dad Vader 66, <laughs> you're correct. The foresight does allow you to fire after an enemy executes a maneuver, but you can also use foresight in your engagement. Por que no los dos, my friend? Why not both? It's simply a, uh, a special weapon. It doesn't say that you can only fire it after your enemy executes a maneuver, it's it's an also. It's a, hey, it does this thing, but you can use it on your normal attack. You get them both. And there is a very clear FAQ entry that, that mm -hmm. governs that as well. Yep. Players, please read the rules reference <laughs> at your leisure. I know it's a large document, uh, but uh, you'd save judges a lot of time. <laughs> Yep, so we saw a you better mean business trigger there. Nobody shot at Nam Lam, so Zan was able to get both of those charges back at the end of the round. And we didn't see much change in health there. Kylo Rem saying, still time to change your mind for the finals and make them extended. Some variety, please. There's plenty of places to find variety. There's there's variety in restriction. Expand your mind, and trust me, we're going to have plenty of extended action uh, in the Galactic Championship Series. So, patience, my friends. Patience. Um. I, I, I am firmly of the view that a properly curated hyperspace actually opens up tons of options and, and sh has the potential to be far better balanced as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem is that uh, so many of the extended powerhouses uh, are uh, you know snuck through <laughs> mm -hmm. in the last uh, uh, points balance and hyperspace revision. I agree. Like, wh Why did the M3As get the generics and the named pilots it's so it's so strange to me the exceptions that they made to the rule of generic or named i 100 percent agree for funsies you know max brook was like <laughs> max brooks is like i'm on the i'm on the out apparently whatever do what i want do what i want you take the ship i mean i i hate to frame them in this light but uh asthma day and you know it, it is a business they are mm. someone was asking about what uh what pack do tracers missiles even come in and i said they had to respond with just the tri-fighter expansion right now and uh so i, I i've been using the phrase a lot priced to sell <laughs> and that that doesn't that's referring to selling expansions not selling the the cards to your ships at, at least it's double dotted. You, you only need one I mean, tri I bought, I, 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 I bought, uh, I bought, no, they only give you a single. So oh, you gotta buy two tri oh, no. I bought two tri fighters. That was what well, they got me for sure. I was gonna buy two tri fighters, anyways. I, I have three false transponder codes. <laughs> <laughs> you bought three of the fire sprays? I did. Wow. Jeez. How many fire sprays do you have? So many. Sixth. So, like, counting from, like, oh, no, there's there's more. They've piled up over the years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you got ones painted right. probably Marauder and Estrada, I'm sure. Yep. And, and you got, you, <laughs> it's right next to his box of Falcons. Um, oh, sure. my God. <laughs> yeah. 
I uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm it's it's total garbage, but I love running the the four scum falcons with yes uh, with the zap the bug zapper. Uh huh. That's, That's amazing. <laughs> And I guess I could have just uh, proxied them, but you know, I like to be proper. Do not have the dice cam up. What is? No I dice cam. Not rolling in the box. There we go. Oh, because it was not in deck. Okay. All right, uh, hit crit here from the foresight. Has some potential to do some damage. The yellow M3A is injured. Um, well, it's going to die now <laughs> with that attack. It's gone. Clears the ship off the table. Never give up. Never surrender. Bruno in the chat here, uh, Puglese says, Internet, nobody will buy six M3As to play on the table. D, please give me six fire sprays, Mr. Store Owner. <laughs> <laughs> I need two more false uh, transponder codes to slap on the uh, Cavern Angels, please. Jeez. Can I make a uh, confession? I bought got? five of the Saw's Renegade packs because I wanted five of the uh, Cavern Angels X-Wing. Yeah, no shame, oh, man. No. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm... I mean, you also got five yeah. U-Wings, though, too. Uh, that's that's right. Awesome. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I think I'm going to give away one of the U-Wings. <laughs> He's like, but not my X-Wings. <laughs> not the X-Wings, though. Nah. All right, so it looks like the M3A is setting up a kill box here. On to yellow. Brown gets out of there pretty easily. CS Body said, I bought three servants of strife packs. I can run three Belbel apps. Yep. Yeah, Belbel lab flexing. Why? I mean, come on! You you got to get the fourth then. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I I got I got four, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a content creator. I got to do it. It's my it's my job. Literally my job. Got to try these things out. <laughs> oh man, yellow in a bad spot here in every single arc. I don't yep. think has a way to get out of them. Could boost I potentially to the left, but then you're giving up your shot. Yep. I think and you that just yellow full aggression. That yellow inquisitor doesn't have shields anymore. It's already been half pointed. Yeah. You take your evade and shoot your foresight. A quick uh What you got on my nine jump masters? Um <laughs> I mean, I think I got like nine gumboats. I think my nine, mine are, my, my nine are more valuable than yours today, at least. It is. <laughs> oh, on this market. Yeah. <laughs> the value, the the market went up. Yeah. All right. So this Inquisitor had a range one shot, got two. Be able to push one through. The spiel. Shield on green. That's what it looks like. Plinking away. And using the foresight ability and no damage through there. That green M3A refusing to give up the half points. Here comes the scum squad ready to take out that yellow Inquisitor. Let's see if they can do it. Does have an evade available for that ship. And the force. Hit crit. Safe. Natty's out for the first one.
Thinking about that shot order. Four dice coming in. This is the Tractor Beam Red M3A. Spends a focus for four. Guarantees a Tractor Beam. Going down to two agility. Still got three shots coming in from Sunny Bounder, the green M3A, and Nom Lom. All right, Sunny Bounder's up. Nothing on this shot. Angle. Only one. Oh, still Close pushes through. through a damage. Oh, oh no, no, sorry. He's got no, the evade. evade. Well, at least he got, he got him to spend the spend the mod here. It's another unmodified That's shot coming in. Dope. Blank out. All right, now I'm on to finish the round. Hit crit. If uh, if Namlon put down, you should thank me. Could potentially get a bonus attack and evades that one. The yellow V1 refusing to take damage. See it. You should thank me. Yep. Oh, he's, he's, oh, he's checking arc. That's why they spawned the arc last round. Yep. Obviously. So spends it. That's two dice going at the yellow M3A and they're uh, sorry, M uh, yellow V1, and it is off the board. You do not have to fire at the ship whose arc you are in when you have You Should Thank Me. You simply have to have somebody pointed at you, and then you shoot whoever you have available. Yeah, super good. Uh, just a generic bonus attack. Mm -hmm. Could mean proton torpedo, turret, primary, anything you want. Yeah, right there. One Inquisitor versus the world. Uh, Nicholas looks like he he wants all the glory. He is he is trying to get what he can to the bitter end. Still setting moves. Listen, I will I will say I'm not telling that Nicholas has to do this, but if you're ever playing on the stream, don't feel pressured to finish the game if you don't want to. <laughs> if you if you want to concede, you are 100 percent welcome Wait, to do it. All right, it is your, it is your game. Feel feel free to unlock the table flip there, Dion. Whenever <laughs> whenever you feel necessary. This is true. Let's Just let us know. go into the permissions. Hey, I I give him mad respect, man. Like, like no, uh, concede. Outrageous. It is. It is, is there... official. The table flip is uh, is enabled. <laughs> there is something to say of like you couldn't kill me in seventy five minutes as well. <laughs> being like, being like, no. You didn't get, you didn't even get total destruction. So, I'll take my Inquisitor and go home. Can unpromoted spectators flip the table? No. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Don't accidentally flip it. Oh, let's get that exclamation point redeemed, Jonah. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes I leave myself unpromoted just so I can't even do it if I if I tried. Here, um, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna do one of these. <laughs> Evil. All right. <laughs> Evil. Are you making a redeem Jonah? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I was like, cause cause I I have an idea for that. And here we go, cartel spacers. Now, one thing I do have to let the chat know is I do got I gotta bounce. Once this game is over, I gotta run. I gotta run. I gotta pick up. Uh, I gotta pick up dinner for the family. And the restaurant closes at eight o'clock, <laughs> aka in uh, fifteen minutes. It's only about tw ten minutes away, so it'll be it'll be quite perfect. So please, I'm I'm forewarning you. Please excuse the. Uh, the, the rush out. It is Sunday night. It is uh, barbecue night here at the Morales household. Foresight. One hit. Yeah, it's just... The foresight has just been completely ineffective against these three agility ships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Orpheus 16 go now, especially in Chicago traffic. Uh, it's 10 minutes with the traffic. <laughs> We're good. Spending the, uh, to get in the focus. It's snowing. Solid. I'll call the restaurant. It'll be fine. I'm a regular there. They know my. They literally know my name. <laughs> I walk in. They're like, "Oh, Dion!" Like, "Hey!" All right, Nom Lom, setting up that target lock, ready to take out that last Inquisitor. <laughs> yes, Gold Squad. Uh, yes, Grim Wolf choosing adulting. And range one, three. Eyeballs spending the focus. And we'll probably see him just take the damage here, right? The red one is full. <laughs> Yep. Uh, he doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have a focus. He ended up barrel rolling. Ah, okay. Do we see the tractor beam here, or uh, or the or the primary? What do you think? Uh, yeah, because you can tractor beam him and roll him over towards the other three ships. So yeah, totally tractor beam. Plus, it's four dice unmodded, so better than three dice unmodded. That's just true. Got two. And that's going to hit Tractor Beam. We'll see that barrel roll most likely to the right side. Mm -hmm. Going to give Nam Lam Sunny Bounder range two shots and then Cartel Spacey with the focus of range one. Then Cruiser has no more mods. It foresighted and uh, spent this focus on offense. He can lose his other shield to that crit. Tender Bounder here. Two dice unmodified for a single hit. Single evade. Nom Lom to finish off the round. Uh, we got Zam charges. Nope. So just a single attack here for one hit. Gonna spend this lock for two. And the Inquisitor two. takes both and dies. That is game over. And we All have right. a new fine uh a new winner. That's right. Well, congratulations to uh, Sebastian Demers winning the Sigma qualifier. Absolutely fantastic. Not only getting promoted to ace, but also, also winning the qualifier. Congratulations. Absolutely great game.